Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to a video about how to do your signals around your stations in OpenTTD. Now, last year I made a video about how the Yogscast could improve their gameplay after they did a charity live stream. Well, they've just done another charity live stream, and I wasn't going to do another video. They did really well, but Duncan had a few problems with his signals and his stations. Was this you, uh, Duncan? Uh, remarkable. Uh, Duncan was Duncan. I cannot believe <laughs> it. Always Duncan. Oh my ah. God. Classic Duncan. <laughs> and Lewis said this. Oh God, my dad is going to make, make a video, video about you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this f noob doesn't know what he's doing. So here we go. This is for you, Duncan. So here we are in OpenTTD. We're going to have a look at some stations. But before we do that, I just want to say that the, the gang did a real good job of a fantastic OpenTTD game in the charity event. So if you want to see that, I've got a link to it down in the video description. So, what we're going to do? Some stations. Well, there's two main sorts of stations. Let's look at that first. The first sort of station is a terminus station. Here you can see we've got a line going into a station and then it terminates. It doesn't continue and go on through the station. And over here, you can see we've got something we call a row row. Stands for roll in, roll out, or roll in, roll off, depends which part of the world you're from. And you can the trains will come in what from one direction, go into the station, and then they'll go out the other side and continue their journey. Sometimes that loops back round, sometimes it goes off somewhere else. And then there's kind of a third kind, which is a bit of a sort of row row, but it's in both directions. So trains can come from one way or the other way, and they can leave from one way or the other way. So how do we actually signal these different types up? Well, we need to divide the stations up into blocks. What's a block? Here we have a section of track, and this section of track is one entire block. To divide it into multiple blocks, we need to use signals. Now, by default in the game, they only give you path signals. You can go into the settings and change it so that you can have other types of signals, but for now, we're using path. We can pop a path signal onto the track and then that will now count as two different blocks of track. Now, if we want to be able to divide our track up into multiple pieces like this, that doesn't create more blocks. This section here, this entire section here, is just one block still. If we want to be able to divide this up into multiple blocks, we'll have to put some more signals on it to break it up or, uh, you know, choose the different sections. Okay, so blocks are sections of track divided up by signals. How does that apply to stations? Well, here we have a four-platform, six-length station in nice little pink. Now, each one of these station platforms is currently a block. But if I do this and put a piece of track on the end of it like that, both these two platforms are now considered part of the same block. And that's because the piece of track is connecting them. In fact, what we could do, if we wanted to, is we could do this, and now the entire station is one block. Now, bear in mind that, generally, a train will only enter a block if it's unoccupied. If a path signal can give it a path through there, then it will also enter the block. But it's just going to treat it as one big block. So, how do we deal with this with regards to our Terminus and Roro stations? Well, if we go over to our terminus station, it's actually okay. The reason for this is that the train reserves path in front of it. So when a train enters a station, it's facing the back of the station and hasn't reserved anything. It can't reserve into the other platform. Therefore, trains can just keep going into terminus stations and it's fine. You don't need extra signals around the station to divide the station up into blocks. All you need is signals to go in and signals for coming out. So in this instance, because I've got one line dedicated for going in and one line dedicated for going out, I'm going to put one-way path signals in. And I'll put a one-way path signal in there and then the trains can come in. And I'll put a one-way path signal there and the trains come out. And we can drag along the lines to um, add the extra signals. Let's see this running. Okay, I've got some trains down and they're cloned and they're going into the station. You can see the slightly darker track in front of the train the way it reserves a path. And you can see how that train reserved a path into the second platform. Now the first train wants to come out. You can see it's reserved a section of this block in front of it. And the uh, third train is waiting. 
Third train can go into the first platform, second train can come out of there. Now, why does this work? Why don't the trains just crash? There's no signals between the platforms and this kind of block in the middle here. Well, that's because the game is lying to us. There's actually an invisible sort of signal on the end of the platform. Kind of. It will allow a train to turn around and be in a station, and it won't exit the station if the block is occupied. I mean, even though there's nothing, no, no signal that you've placed there. You can see this as the train comes out. As the train comes out here, if I just stop it so the back end of this train is still in the block, the other train that's still in the station, this train back here, train number four, is just sat there, waiting. Because that magic invisible um, signal at the end of the platform is not letting the train come out. So this is the first thing that you need to learn about the uniqueness of terminus stations. You don't need signals on the end of them for it to be divided up into blocks and to allow the trains not to crash. This train is just not coming out and crashing. Now, if I tell it to ignore signal, it will continue on down the track and we'll have a Duncan situation. With that in mind, let's have a look at some basic station designs. Now I say basic because these are beginner stations. They'll work, but they're not going to be the most efficient, but they're going to be good starting off points, and if you want to get advanced later, you can. So here we have a basic two-platform one like we were looking at. Uh, tracks go in, tracks go out, and you can see here we've got the junction right in front of the station there because there's just no need for any gap to be there at all, uh, no need for any signals that you can have a nice compact design. If you want more platforms, you can expand this design to just have little extra sticky out bits and bits and more tracks so every train can go in every direction. If you want something that's a little bit more flow better, then maybe you might want to do a design a little bit more like this. Uh, your trains have less chances of turning multiple times as they go into the station. Not a massive difference, but some people prefer the aesthetics of this one. And if you want to take it up a notch and get slightly more complicated, then you want to be looking at a design a little bit more like this one. This one divides the track up and the station into two sets of two. And by doing that, the throughput is better. So for these ones, you can see that um, one train can either be going in or out at once, maybe more if the path signal lets the reservation work. But with this one, you are splitting your trains up into two parts, and you can actually duplicate this and have three, four, five, many, many platforms with the same sort of idea. So what about row row stations like this one? Well, we can apply a lot of what we've learned already to the station. We know we need signals for coming in and signals on the way out. But here on the way in, we now know that we probably don't need any signals directly before the station. So we can do our junction right before it and place our signal before the junction. As the train comes in, it will get to this final signal, look forward to see which of the two platforms it wants to go into, and it will go into it. But there is a big difference here. Because these two platforms are joined together at the end of the station and the trains are going to be facing in that direction, this whole station will be considered one giant block because we've not divided up the platforms on the far side. The simple way to resolve this is just to place a signal pointing into the station on the end of each platform. This means that the track coming into the station is divided up into blocks. The junction that goes into the platform is a block. And each platform can be used as separate blocks thanks to the signals on the end. Then we'll pop our signals in and go off back down the line in the other direction. And there we go. That is how this one works. Let's throw some trains in it. So here we go, we've got a few diesel trains coming in this time. And as the diesel trains come into the station, you can see how each one is reserving separate platforms and is then able to leave the station at the end once it's available. So as soon as there is a platform free, a train can enter the block and fill up that spare platform. But if there isn't one, the train will wait for a moment and then go into the platform that it's designated. With row row stations, the important thing to remember is the signals on the end of the platform. Let's remove these signals and just see what would happen if we did that. So now the trains are coming in, the first train goes into the first platform, and the entire block of the station is used up, forcing the train to wait out the back. It's important that the, you remember to put these signals on the outside of the platforms here, because if you don't, 
you're only then going to end up using one platform of your Roro. So let's pop them in there and allow the trains to fill them up. And now we come to the more complex sort, where trains can come in from either direction. Although this is kind of the same as just two row rows on the top of each other. Let's think about that. So we know that if we want to come in from this side, we need a signal for coming in. And if we want to come in from this side, we need a signal for coming in. Now, if we're heading out from that side, we need a signal for going out. And if we're heading out that side, we need a signal for going out. That's all brilliant. But we also know that we need signals on the ends of the platforms. So, looking at the signal at the bottom, if we're coming into the station, we need signals on the end of the platforms like this. But they are one-way path signals. That would stop trains entering from the other direction. That's why we change away from one-way path signals to using the path signals where trains can come in the back, the standard path signal. And if we're coming from the other direction, we know that we need to block off and put signals on the end of the platform on the other side as well. And that's it. There we go. This will work. This will allow trains to come from either direction, go into the station, and actually leave in either direction too. Let's see that running. We can see here that trains can enter from both directions, and as long as there is a free path, this works quite nicely. Again, not the most efficient of stations, but it does work. So we've had a look at some of the ways to do stations, but let's have a look at some of the mistakes that people sometimes make. First up is depots. And depots on the end of platforms like this, people may tell you, is a mistake because you will have some train crashes. And they're half right. It is a mistake, but not because you'll have train crashes. Trashed here, train depot. What's wrong with it, other than the... The corpses. Why are the depots <laughs> at the end of the station? <laughs> because they can go in and repair and then come straight back out again and then they're in the station. It's really good actually. Well you think that's good. That's actually one of the things that that man told us we should be doing. <laughs> what the fucking pro yeah. open TCD That's the hello. <laughs> it's, it's actually okay to do this. It, you, it will work. But, and this is a relatively big but, it will cause you flow and throughput and efficiency problems. So for that reason, not because of crashes, I would say don't do it. Get rid of them. Boom. The reason is, is that if a train comes into the station uh, and then decides it wants to service, it will go through the station and into the depot, freeing up the platform for another train to come in. Now, if there's another train waiting there, it'll come into the station and your first train will get stuck in the depot. And you can end up with lots of trains stuck in lots of depots all over the place. Thus, bad throughput, bad efficiency. So please put your depots elsewhere on the line if possible. Now, the primary cause of train crashes throughout my entire history of doing viewers games, let's plays and charity events is actually people adjusting signals and track, usually around stations or junctions. Now, I'm going to show you how I do it to avoid any sorts of collisions or problems. Now, it's all about isolating the area what you want to work on. So, for example, we've got this junction up here that we accidentally did wrong and it, it's not how we want it to be. We need to be able to isolate that. So, we need to be able to delete a piece of track leading up to it, primarily, or ideally, before a signal. So if we delete this piece of track here, it's got a signal on it, and there's a chance that when we put that piece of track back, a train could go straight down that piece of track before we manage to re-add a signal. So we'll cut it back off here, back up there, to make it nice and safe. And then down here, what we could do is remove these signals at the end of the platform and the track that's there. But then when we add the bits of track back, the signals aren't there yet. And we need those signals to make that block safe. So actually what we're going to do is remove the signals from the bottom down here. And that has cut off this entire section of the network. Once the trains move out, this bit is isolated and safe to work on. Now, we haven't isolated this piece of track up here, but that's an exit. That bit doesn't matter. We could go ahead and make our adjustment, correct it, move the signals to where we actually want them to be, and then we can place in our track. And because we are placing in track that, um, you know, before the signals and the junctions, everything will be fine and it's all good and we have no crashes. So remember, 
isolate your track. So what do you think? With the tips and tricks I've given so far, could Duncan avoid train crashes in open TTD? Or is it his destiny to always have these hiccups and mistakes on his railway lines? Let me know what you think down in the comments. But either way, I'm really looking forward to their next game of open TTD. Now remember, all of this has been with path signals, which are the default signals in the game. The other signals you don't really need, unless you're doing more complex and advanced junctions like priority merges. So you may have different things to do if you're not using path signals, but I do recommend path signals for the beginner and for normal track. To finish off, here are some stations from my Series 10 Let's Play. Now there are some graphical mods here, but the gameplay itself is still the same. This is a relatively complex station, I'm going to quickly go over it. We have a line coming in that has a, from a kind of branch line, and this line can only access the first two platforms due to the uh, piece of track just here. We have signals before it, and they can go in and out. Then we have the main line running beside this big shop bu building, whatever that is. Um, and then that can actually go into any of the platforms, which actually is quite good. We've got some extra platforms here which look different, and then we've got a small platform on the back which is for mail, so we've got an extra line coming in the back here with a waypoint to allow trains to be guided towards that platform, um, and then they can go back down the main line the way they came in. There's a good one up here, here we go. Here's an example of a row row station where the line splits into three, has some depots, and then each of those three lines split into two and go off round this corner to merge back together. Uh, nice and efficient, maybe not the most efficient, but certainly better than some of the basic stations. And here we have a massive terminus too, but all using pretty much the same basic principles that I explained throughout this video. So, using those basic principles, you can grow and expand your stations. For example, here you go, here is a simple Roro station. It's got four platforms, but we make sure that we've got the signals on the end of the platforms, they merge together, and off they go. So there we have it. If you want to know more about OpenTTD, there is a link in the video description to my tutorials. And if you want to know more about me, it's masterhellish.net. Put all your thoughts, ideas, and of course your questions down in the comments section, and I will see you soon. Thank you for watching. Take care. And for now, goodbye.